Okay, look, I know I'm a melee player, but this is some bullshit. We're five years into Smash Ultimate, and it still feels like we're finding out new things about this game with each passing event. Banjo players are top eighting majors, and whatever the fuck this is, we've only seen improvements from the characters across the cast top to bottom. And despite this, a lot of these changes in perception are pretty minimal. Yeah, you moved up from a low tier to a low mid tier. Does that actually mean anything in the grand scheme of things? Okay, I'm done. Well, there has been one character, though, that's been able to creep their way towards the illustrious top tier of the game and propel themselves into the conversation as one of the late meta ultimate characters. This character had tools that didn't seem that strong initially and really seemed more like an anti-meta pick, but a triad of players have been putting together a case for Smash 4's most forgettable addition being one of the strongest fighters in the game. And in case you didn't see the top 8 of Genesis X, which had fucking three of them, we just might see the rise of the next counterpick character, Corrin. Okay, disclaimer, but in Smash 4, Corrin was debatably top tier, but with one of the strongest punish games and the best frame trapping in the entire game, this character actually had a lot of potential. We even saw Cosmos win a major near the end of this game's lifespan with solo Corrin, marking the character's sole major win, and perhaps if we had seen the game go as long as Ultimate, we would have seen more of these results. When Ultimate first came out, Corrin kinda sucked, and it seemed like the dream of that character winning another major was far behind us. Corrin received buffs through nearly every major update, but it was at patch 8.0.0 where we saw a multitude of changes to the character that really gave him the edge that he needed to keep up in the meta. This was followed by still not a whole lot of representation, but the seed was planted. This absolute powerhouse of a sortie holds attributes that even the strongest of characters in Ultimate wish they possessed. To start off, we have Corrin's Swiss Army Knife of Aerials, which provide the character with a ton of unique value. In the late meta of Smash Ultimate, the punish game is everything. Getting consistent big damage off of safe interactions is a recipe for success, and Corrin has the range and power to do all of that. Forwarder is a great poking move, being slightly disjointed and just minus four on block, along with being a potent combo starter, and the other one of these is Neutral Air, which notably hits on both sides of the character. At just minus seven on block, it allows Corrin a relatively safe landing option where, in the case that it does hit, can lead to a devastating reversal. These two aerials alone gave Corrin access to combos at nearly any percent and had a strong chance to set up for an edge guard on top of all of it. Down Air is, well, just Down Air, but it does provide some niche value like the occasional spike or a landing mix-up, and the other two aerials are the hardest hitting, Bear and Up Air. Corrin's back air is an incredibly disjointed auto-spacing move that is one of the character's deadliest combo finishers, working especially well out of a landing nair. Up air, on the other hand, is Corrin's strongest vertical killing move and also acts as a great reversal option because of its huge hitbox that swings over both sides of the character. So, when piloted by a top player, Corrin's aerials seem to effortlessly combo into one another, matching the offensive prowess of a fighter like Steve or Fox. But this character's real X-Factor comes in with their most iconic move, Insta-Pin. Pin has been a staple to Corrin's kit since Smash 4, where it reigns supreme as one of the best moves in the entire game. While it isn't quite as powerful in Ultimate, the move still holds incredible power as a pace-setting tool. Insta-Pin allows Corrin to stab into the stage with a large disjointed move, and if you manage to catch an opponent, this completely stops them in their tracks. From here, Corrin can decide whether to lunge forward, back, jump out of the pin and attack with an aerial, or cancel the pin and set up a tech chase situation. This basically establishes an RPS that leaves the opponent constantly guessing. Do you just take the hit, or do you need to react to being released from the pin? On top of this, pin as an attack is also incredibly strong. The move has a tipper hitbox, which can be used as a pseudo combo finisher or an air dodge read, but its real value comes in with ledge trapping. Instapin's tipper hitbox is conveniently able to two frame, and because of its disjointed attribute, Corrin essentially gets a free chance to kill you at a ridiculously low percent every time you go for a recovery. So add this to a serviceable set of moves on the ground, some other funny special moves, and probably the best frame trapping setups in the game, and you have honestly a devastating character. Corrin was written off at first, and even after the buffs, he didn't have proper representation. I'm talking like bottom five least played character lack of representation. But the players crazy enough to pilot him had something cooking. The character's best representative in Smash 4, Cosmo, showed off some of Corrin's strength through 2020 in the online era, getting some incredible placements. But it was actually MK Leo that got some of the greater public's eyes on Corrin when he won Rita 2022. Leo was able to beat the likes of Spargo and Gluttony, and this was the first time Corrin was used in grand finals of a major. But aside from all of that, there's three players in particular that
that we want to highlight here that have piloted Corrin as their soul fighter and have seen tons of recent success. We have a pair of solo mains, the United States Shattuck and Japan's Neo, along with Spargo, a master of sword characters who has recently been adding Corrin as a prominent character in his kit. Now, we all know about Spargo at this point, so we won't dive too deep into him, but the other two competitors absolutely showed out in 2023. These two had entered tournaments prior to that, but 2023 is really where we saw them make their splash on the competitive scene and push this character into potentially top tier status. For Shattuck, his Smash career began back in 4, where at the young age of just 8, he entered his first tournament, Southwest Comic Con 2015. He stuck to practicing on 4 Glory for now, and with the unwavering support of his dad, known by the community as Dadic, he attended the same event for the following 3 years before he was finally introduced into his local tournament scene. This introduction fueled Shattuck's fire, and he was determined to become the best Corrin main in the world. Upon Ultimate's release, Shattuck might have been aware of other events, but still wasn't able to attend that many. When he did finally get the chance, he never placed worse than 3 and 2, but the results were just alright. The lockdown in 2020 gave Shattuck an ability to grind the game, and after entering a ton of online majors and seeing honestly great results, a brand new player was forged from the fire. In 2021, he was seen as one of the strongest up-and-comers in North America, with his local placements going from good to basically unbeatable. The following year was even better for Shattuck, rising all the way up to number 27 on the PGRU V3 North American ranking, and it was obvious he had a ton of potential. Mind you, this was all with Solo Corrin, a character that wasn't even considered to be a high tier at the time. People were impressed not just by that character choice, but his immense skill at such a young age. He didn't miss a major top 64 for all of 2022, and when 2023 came around, it was clear that Shattuck and Corrin were both on the rise. Top 32s at LMBM, Genesis, and Collision to start the year were clear signs of his eventual rise to prominence. But with all that being said, and on the other side of the world, there was another Corrin player making a name for themselves in the land of the rising sun, Neo. Neo made himself known to the Smash community in 2020 with a string of montages he posted onto his YouTube channel. In it, he showed off his 1800 Smashmate rating, a respectable ranking, and a ton of Corrin gameplay. His first official event was the Smash World Tour Japan qualifier, and that was in April of 2021, where he placed 17th with wins over Pasiri Man and Yuzu. Neo's first offline showing was at Kageribi No. 4 just two months later, where he placed a respectable 65th in that insanely stacked region. Like many of the other Japanese players, Neo decided to give it some more time before consistently attending offline events, since the level of competition was so high, especially since the boom of popularity starting in 2022. Over that next year, he continued to play on the Smashmate ladder, and ultimately came back as a brand new player. With a flashy, in-your-face style of Corrin, it took just three months after his return to offline competition to win his first local, Dawn No. 8. This win was over top players in the country like Huto, Gorioka, and Motsunabe. By that time next year, Neo had already top 8 at a major at Meisuma Top 12, and had wins over the likes of Ken, Shutone, and T, all top 10 players in Japan. These incredible results netted Neo the support to get a fully funded trip to SmashCon with the help of some community members, and for the first time ever, we were going to see the two best Corrin players in the world at the same event. Japan took over the competitive scene in 2023, and given the fact that Neo was getting great results against said competition, many could only assume that he was the stronger of the two Corrins. On the other hand, Shattuck was improving at an exceedingly fast rate. Given this never-before-seen match and the hype of Corrin increasing around this time, there was a first-to-five Corrin ditto between the two competitors. And Shattuck absolutely washed Neo. 5-0, my B style, though given how new both of these players were to the scene, I'm not really sure either of them actually know about my B, but whatever. My B. This was Neo's first time in the US though, and the first time up on stage in front of a crowd, and that's a very different type of energy. What ended up happening on the tournament weekend though was an absolutely remarkable weekend from both of these players. Neo defeated Tweak, who had an undefeated record against Karin up until that point, and in one of the biggest heartbreakers of the whole event, he lost a game five set to the eventual champ, Akola. Shattuck on the other hand had an equally impressive run to ninth place, taking wins over Esam, Chase, and Big D in the process. This tournament was undeniable proof that Corrin's stocks were at an all-time high. So we mentioned before that Corrin has been considered to be a quote late meta character, but what does that even mean? When fighting games, but Smash titles especially, are released, there's an initial tier of characters that present themselves as the strongest. <gasps> They generally have rather low execution barriers or extremely strong, hard to deal with buttons. Think of early Melee Sheik or Brawl Snake. Even in today's metagame, they're considered top tiers in their respective games, but early on in the game's lifespan, they were both significantly better, with early tier lists having Sheik as number one for multiple years and Snake as the clear number two behind Meta Knight for three consecutive years. Late meta characters, on the other hand, are ones that have strengths that aren't as apparent initially, the characters that were seen as strong but didn't have anyone optimize them, or in the case of Smash 4 and Ultimate, 
there's buffs or nerfs that change the character and the field around them. In Corrin's case, this was a combination of a few different factors. Corrin did receive a lot of buffs through a majority of the patches, but because of the fact that Corrin did seemingly fall off from Smash 4, a lot of players didn't give the character a chance. And we've seen this with characters like Cloud and Bayonetta as well, where a majority of people thought those two characters were legitimately bad upon release, and now they're both considered at least high tiers by a majority of players. Corrin's tools seem to be very effective against a lot of the meta-relevant characters as well. Like we mentioned earlier, Corrin's amazing punish game just wasn't something that was being pushed to a top level. What really makes Corrin strong though, and this is something that's common across a lot of Ultimate's best characters, is that they have a very consistent gameplay across a majority of their matchups. Between never-ending combo routes and the amount of bullying Corrin can put you in while in disadvantage, Corrin has the potential to put together a win against nearly any character. We'll touch on this in a bit, but Corrin has become a common counterpick character against Sonic, thank god. We've seen both MK Leo and Spargo try Corrin multiple times against Sonic's and have seen success for the most part. Right before SmashCon of last year, Nao and Shattuck actually came together and made a Corrin matchup chart, and looking at it, this is really solid. Having positive matchups against Steve, Kazuya, Sonic, and Rob is definitely a strong advantage to have going into a tournament. So both of these competitors closed out 2023 incredibly strong. Shattuck secured three major top eights at Rising Grind, Big House 11, and Luminosity Makes Moves Miami, and he became the highest placing solo main Corrin at a major ever, securing a fourth place over MK Leo, Riddles, Zamba, and Cola. At the time of this recording, and with Smash GG data through the end of February, it says Shattuck hasn't lost a non-major event since July 15th of 2023. This includes 38 local wins, 5 regional wins, and wins over players like Mutace, Dark Wizzy, Anathema, Cola, Shiny Mark, and Beast Mode Paul. That, that's such a good resume. For Neo, the remainder of 2023 was good, but he couldn't replicate that success he had at SmashCon. He pulled in an amazing 13th place at Luminosity Makes Moves Miami, won a major event in Korea and China, a regional in the US over Onin, along with a ton of other Japanese events. Neo has certainly pushed himself into the upper echelon of Japanese competitors and has to be looked at as one of the top 10 or 15 from the country, all with Corrin. Now we're in 2024 at Genesis X. With practically every top player other than a few top Japanese competitors, this event was going to be a true test of metal. We'll start with Spargo first, since his Corrin only came out for a single set prior to top 8 against Ken in Winner's Quarters. I watched the throne, we saw Spargo double eliminate Sonics with the Cloud, but he started switching it up starting at Coinbox IRL and has been seeing varying results. This pick solidified Spargo's faith in the matchup, and he ended up securing a 3-2 win on Ken with Corrin. The 20th seed Shaddix run started with a pair of back-to-back 3-2s over Noi and Yara, two of Japan's strongest players. His next set was unfortunately against Tweak, who's likely Shaddix's biggest player roadblock right now, and this hurdle remained strong as Tweak's Diddy Kong took down Shaddix 3-1 and sent him into the loser's side. Shaddix had to fight his way through the loser's bracket if he wanted a spot in top 8. It started with a 3-2 win over Jackal, who was on a 6-set loser's run coming into this set, a 3-1 win over Gluttony, yes, Gluttony, who was upset by Zamba in the winner's bracket. If you want to hear more about that, check out our last video on Zamba and the apparent easiest win of his career. But yeah, this marked Shaddock's highest ranked win ever, and he was able to send Gluto home at 13. His final obstacle was Meister, though, who had a lot of experience against Corrin from his practice with MK Leo, so this would be a tough one. But in a triumphant 3-2 win, Shaddock emphatically popped off as he secured his top 8 spot. The 24th seed Neo had a similar run through the winner's bracket. He defeated Ouch, then Peckham in top 64, who he had the luxury of fighting due to an early MK Leo upset before a 3-2 loss to his bracket demon, Shutone and Aegis, pushing Shutone's lifetime record up to 7-1. Once heading the loser's bracket, Neo embarked on a gut-wrenching run where every set he won for the rest of the event went down to Game 5. First was Onan Steve, then Zachary's Pit, who seemed to be the master of clutch at this event, and finally Ken and his Sonic. Coming fresh off a set against Spargo's Corrin, Ken started the set up 2-0 against Neo and looked like he was going to send him home, but against all odds, Neo fought his way back and reverse 3-0'd Ken to earn his spot in top 8 as well. And for anyone who didn't get to catch Genesis live, these two actually did end up playing the runback Corrin Ditto, where when the lights were the brightest and the stakes were the highest, Neo was able to win 3-2 over Shattuck, leaving the latter at 7th place while Neo fell to Sonics in the following round for 5th. Spargo, the last kind of representative for Corrin, ended up getting 3rd place, where he took Sonics to a game 5 with the character, but in the end, 
end, the king of the coin box was able to secure that set. And oh yeah, let's not forget that a few weeks ago, Shattuck also won a whole major tournament with Corrin. Yeah, right in the middle of making this, Shattuck did the impossible and managed to win Solo Corrin's first major event at Circuit du CFL 3. This career-defining run from the Texan came over the likes of Mia, DeBuzz, and a double elimination of Mudace in Grand Finals. And look, all of these guys are amazing players, and I'm sure they would be winning regardless of their character selection, but I do hope this Genesis Top 8 helped to provide some validity on Corrin being a late meta character and a potential top tier contender. I mean, some of you might be forgetting how little people played this character and how surprising this really is. In a 2020 post from Barnard's Loop, he looked over the character statistics of 251 power rankings across five continents. This was an aggregate of 3,000 plus players ranked as the best in their respective regions, and Corrin ranked all the way at the bottom of usage percentage, tied with me Brawler at just 0.1%. If you were to tell someone back then that four years later, we'd have three Corrin players in a top eight at a P tier event, well, they probably wouldn't even know what a P tier event was in the first place, but they would definitely be surprised by the fact that anyone was still even using this goddamn character. I feel as proud as Dadic now seeing them dominate some of the strongest meta characters like Sonic, Steve, and Game & Watch, along with troubling matchups like Snake looking more and more possible by the second. The fact that we're seeing Karn as a strong mixture of both solo mains and counterpick characters really nails the point in. So I hope you all like Shattuck, Neo, Spargo, and any other Karn players out there because I really don't think this character is going anywhere anytime soon. Hey, thank you all so much for watching, and let me know in the comments if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more of it. If you want to help support us even more in making more of this stuff possible, you can click the join button down next to the subscribe button, which you should have already had clicked in the first place, so um, yeah, do one of those two things, or something. Okay, bye!